Hello and welcome. My name is Colin Smith. I teach piano, voice, and music history at Wonderland Performing Arts. In this video we'll learn a few acting exercises, a few music basics, and a little bit of trivia towards the end of the episode. And without further ado, Mr. Colin Smith. I said this video will specialize in some acting exercises and a few brief musical warm-ups. Let's go. When I'm working on a new piece of music, monologue or dialogue, I like to start by experimenting with my stage directions. Now these are very important. And navigating the stage aids you in following the directions of your director as well as sharing the stage and Maneuvering it with confidence. We have, of course, downstage. <laughs> and upstage. <sighs> Good. No? All right. Downstage. <sighs> and upstage. <sighs> now then. Naturally, there is center stage, where everyone can see you. Left stage, stage left, the actor's left. And stage right, the actor's right. Now, you can do any combination of these. For instance, coming down right, seeing someone back here, and moving up left. It's very important to move with confidence, but to keep your face towards the audience. So I'll start again at center. A friend is calling me up right, excuse me. And then, I notice something's wrong down left. But now I want to tell the world a different story, and so I come center stage. Remember the motivations of your character, and remember what makes sense in your dialogue. Speaking of which, let's move to a few monologue exercises. When I'm learning a new piece of stage prev, <clears throat> I like to read aloud. This helps me gain the feel of what the words are as I say them, and how I feel about them. Uh, my personal experience aids in learning, but also aids in the way that I say things. Reading aloud helps me connect with the emotion of the character. So step one is reading aloud. Step two is memorization. This is very important, as traditionally musicians memorize their pieces before they perform. They can connect with the drama within. Memorization can be attained in many ways. Writing it down, of course, is helpful. Writing it down one, two, or three times so that the action of repeating the words in a physical manner, not just in a vocal manner, helps you remember them. Flashcards are very helpful. For instance, in dialogue, I might put my fellow actor's cue on one side, which would prompt me to remember my line, which is on the other side. And in a monologue, I might perhaps put the beginning of the next sentence, please don't, 
and then the rest of the sentence, go away for I need you. And so, and so on. Last but not least, this is not quite as popular as people, as it should be for people. Recording yourself. Recording yourself allows you to watch your gestures, to listen to your speech and your clarity. It allows you to become your own critic. This is helpful. Now, while we can all be our own worst critics, <laughs> we all must be patient with ourselves. Watching ourselves in a recording allows us to take note of words that are misspoken, words that are rearranged, and other details in the script. Not to mention gestures that follow the connection of the emotion or disconnect from the different emotions. This allows us to give notes to ourselves. It's very helpful. Step three would be to choose. Now this is very vague, of course, but choosing one's own blocking is important. I choose to use the full range of the stage when I perform because then I have confidence. I also choose to note some of my blocking in my own monologue. As you can see here, my lines are in black and my notes are in red. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it distracts me. So it's very helpful to make and choose my gestures with the sayings that I have, as well as my inflection. For instance, I might say to someone, excuse me, because I'm politely trying to get their attention, and so the patience is in the gesture. Uh, I might say it in a more derogatory manner, if someone has bumped into me, oh, excuse me, the firmness of my attitude is in the gesture. Last but not least, step four, be consistent. Confidence comes with consistency. It is very key in nailing a monologue. When you are consistent, you start to feel the flow of your gestures, the flow of the blocking from stage right to stage left or vice versa. And you also learn how your fellow actors respond to your movement. You move one way and they follow you, or you move another and they move away from you. It's very interesting to see how it all plays out. Now then, I'm going to show you a little bit of my range and use of the stage with a monologue from Finding Nemo, performed by the character Dory. Please don't go. No one's ever stuck with me for so long. And, and if you leave, I just... <laughs> when you're with me, I, I can remember things. I, I can't look up. P. Sherman, 42. 42? Yeah, it's there, I know it is. I, I can feel it. And, and when, when you're with me, I... I'm home. Please don't let that go away. I don't want to forget. Naturally, following my own steps, I will go back and watch this video later and take all the notes so unnecessarily <laughs> about my performance. It's very important to see where I went, why I went there. Then, instead of using red, I'll use another color. My script tends to look like graffiti after a while. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I made full range of the stage and it's... I think it's time for an intermission. to some trivia, I like to go through some musical exercises. If you'll follow me to the piano. Now then, when we warm up, it's very important to start with humming. Warming up is very useful when we're practicing a song, a new piece of script or monologue. We're going to hum first. This treats the vocal cords very gently and allows them to come together. 
This is helpful when you're hoarse as well. So, open mouth but close lips. Listen first. Your turn. Of course, I would use open mouth exercises such as zia, zia, using the springboard of the e to the a, ah, so that there is great motion in the mouth. Let's sing. Zia, zia. This is one that I know my students know about. It's very helpful when promoting breath support. This is the shh exercise. We breathe in for four counts and then out for eight counts. Feel free to join in. Breathe in. Good. Constant breath. Breathe in. Good. Breathe in. 16. Now. Nicely done. These are certainly helpful in the morning before you go to school. We don't do a lot of talking in school unless we're answering questions or talking to our friends. Teachers especially do a lot of talking in school. I always encourage new teachers to get into vocal lessons because it helps them remember to maintain the voice and learn about voice health. Now, I think I forgot something. Ah, uh, yes. My little nerd moment. Did you know that there are three different versions of Phantom that went to Broadway? It's true. One of them was just opera music but with different words to fit the scene. That's cheating. The second, of course, was yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber. My personal favorite came in 1997. Phantom, the American musical, is a much more classical approach to the story, with classical music, more operatic sounding, better costumes, and a more emotional storytelling of why the Phantom falls in love with Christine and what his fate is to be at the end of the show. It's a wonderful story, and I recommend that you look it up. Phantom, the American musical. Now let's move to my favorite part. Learning about a musician's spotlight. Now we have lots of musicians and composers throughout history that are worthy of learning about. My personal favorite is Laura Benanti. She's been very popular in recent years. Born in New York City, she was raised in New Jersey. At 18, took over the role of Maria after Rebecca Luker. <sighs> Big shoes to fill. She was featured in such wonderful musicals such as Swing, Into the Woods, Nine, The Wedding Singer, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. Very, very good. She Loves Me, <sighs> and My Fair Lady. I encourage you to listen to all of these musicals and look her up in your free time. And now our show must come to an end. Today's episode was brought to you by... The Dynamic Forte! And we finish our show with a quote from Judy Garland. It is better to be a first-rate version of oneself than to be a second-rate version of someone else. Good day from Wonderland, and I'll see you soon.